Both Insomniac and the Ratchet and Clank series has played victim to experimentation over the last few years with spin-off titles and outside ventures that haven't exactly paid off. But no more it seems because both the company and the IP have returned to form in this reimagining of the original Ratchet and Clank title. Tied in with the film of the same name, which itself is based on a 14 year old game of the same name, this is Ratchet and Clank back the way it's supposed to be. It's an excellent adventure filled with witty humour, addicting gameplay, and the nostalgic factor of not only the original game itself, but of what the gaming industry once was a decade and a half ago, before the age of pre-orders, digital distribution, and daily patches consumed the market. This is good old fashioned gaming, brought back from the dead. First things first, this isn't a remaster. In fact, it would be an insult to call this game that. Reimagining or even reboot is a much more accurate term here. Down to the characters, the environments, the gadgets and the weapons, there is a lot of familiarity here for those who played the original 2002 game. But at the same time, there's more than enough enhancement, polishing and just plain new here to call this a fresh experience. We follow the adventures of Ratchet, a Lombax who craves to join the Galactic Rangers and Captain Quark to fight Drek and Dr. Nefarious. Luck has it when a defect robot nicknamed Clank crash lands on the Ratchet's home planet and the two quickly become friends. Together they join the Galactic Rangers and jump from planet to planet, saving the galaxy one step at a time. Now some of this may sound familiar, but there were quite a few key differences in the story beats. These differences seem to place Ratchet more firmly in the position of the hero's journey arc, and is more fitting of the kind of storyline you would expect out of a Pixar film. In fact, the entire aesthetic of this game from its choices in sound design, lighting, stylized yet stunningly beautiful graphics and its humour are all done in selling the fact that you're playing through a Pixar movie. The game sure does look like one already, so job well done to Insomniac. The game also isn't afraid to make fun of itself from time to time. It knows it's a game based on a movie based on a game, and it knows how silly pre-order bonuses are in this day and age of gaming. But again, this game is absolutely gorgeous, and it doesn't take a pixel counter to be able to see that. Gameplay here looks like it's ripped right out of the latest CGI film, and its colourful vast array of planets only helps players marvel at its beauty over and over again until the end credits. The planets not only vary heavily on its looks, but also its design. While some more linear map designs are beat for beat identical to that of their PS2 counterparts, others are more fresh takes and even open up the playground from further exploration. Some maps even require a jetpack just to explore the full range of what is offered here. Now before I wrap up the presentation of part of this review, I want to mention that while the story is fun, it felt like it wasn't fully fleshed out in the game. As a reintroduction to the two titular characters, I felt that there was a lack of character moments that really fleshed them out to the point where they were almost at risk of simply being archetypes, and I can't help but feel like the Titan film is the one holding onto those moments exclusively. This may just be a personal nitpick of mine, but it was something that was constantly bothering me in an otherwise excellent game. The meat and potatoes of Ratchet and Clank have always allied with its gameplay. Returning to third person action platforming, it feels classic, yet heavily refined. Outside of your trusty Omni range for melee attacks, you have an assortment of both familiar and new unique gadgets and weapons for use in both puzzle and gunfight situations, all of which are upgradable under a fairly in-depth system. Longtime players will recognize devices such as the Trespasser and the Handy Slingshot, but newcomers such as the Pixelizer are nice additions to the already extremely fun collection. Each weapon is unique and very fun in their own way, and it's quite encouraging to try and upgrade them all. The addicting aspect comes from the fact that you are constantly rewarded when you're playing. The maps are all littered with collectible trading cards, golden bolts, and raritanium, and finding them all is very entertaining. The rewards come in the form of extras, in-game cheats, and costumes. Conservative players might only need two or three playthroughs, including a run-through challenge mode, to be able to platinum the game. But be careful as you progress, because the save options are very limited, and you can't make more than one save at a time. Every now and then you get moments to fly around into your ship and battle aerial attacks. Other times you get handed over control to Clank, which consists of somewhat repetitive puzzles. These Clank sections slow the game down a bit, but it doesn't hinder the otherwise responsive and satisfying gameplay. Ratchet and Clank is a fantastic game. Feeding our need for addictive and simply fun gameplay, reminiscent of platformers from at least two generations ago, with the presentational quality rivaling that of the current top looking CGI films. There is a lot to marvel at with this reboot. It's very welcoming to both newcomers and longtime fans alike, and for the price, the amount of content is well worth your money. I absolutely recommend you pick up this game as it's one of the best PS4 exclusives out at the moment. With the Ratchet and Clank franchise back at peak, it's leaving a very hopeful future for not only the franchise, but for the long lost platforming genre. Because this is a step in the right direction. Thanks for watching, I'm Mega Gamer, and for more gameplay videos and reviews from me, subscribe and stick to my channel.